Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started working with JavaScript as a beginner. So why don't you go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. JavaScript is a programming language used to create dynamic and interactive web pages. JavaScript runs on a web browser, such as Google Chrome, Safari, Edge, whatever you use to browse the internet, basically. By using JavaScript, we can respond to user actions and transform user input whenever somebody interacts with our site. In this example, I have a calculator written with HTML. It's not very pretty, and it doesn't function. We have the framework that we need at least though. By applying CSS, we can add color and style to this calculator, but unfortunately it still doesn't function. By including JavaScript code, this calculator can perform actions, and is well, useful. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started working with JavaScript. I would recommend knowing HTML and CSS before starting the series. I do have a full free course on my channel if you're interested in learning those, or if you need a refresher. If you don't know either, you could probably still get by watching this video. I'll walk you through both as we go along throughout the series. Now before we do begin, you will need a text editor. One text editor that I recommend is VS Code, which you can download from code.visualstudio.com. For a step-by-step -step instruction of how to install it, feel free to check out the HTML and CSS series. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. So what we'll need to do is create a new project folder. In VS Code, you can go to the left toolbar, go to Explore, we will open a folder. I'll place this folder on my desktop just for convenience. I will create a new folder which I will name website to contain my website files. Let's select this folder. And we are now within our website folder. We'll need three files, an HTML file, CSS file, and JavaScript file. We'll begin with the HTML file. We can close out of this welcome window. I will name my HTML file index.html. In a website, the index.html file is typically used as the homepage. We have our HTML file. Next comes the CSS file. Mine will be named style.css. The CSS style sheet is in charge of the overall appearance of the web page. This can include fonts, colors, positioning, stuff like that. Then lastly, we have the JavaScript file, which I will name index.js. The JavaScript file is in charge of the interactivity of a web page. So altogether, we have structure, style, and actions. So rearrange these tabs however you like. I switch back and forth between the JavaScript and HTML file quite often, so I tend to put them right next to each other, but do whatever's most convenient for you. So to generate the necessary text to create a web page in your HTML file, in VS Code, you can type exclamation point, then hit tab. So here you can change the title of your web page if you want. I'll change my title to be my website. And that's all we'll need for now. Now we'll need to link the style sheet to the HTML file. Now we are going to create a link tag. We can link an external style sheet to our HTML file. Within the link tag, there is a relationship attribute shortened to REL. The relationship will be style sheet. We are linking a style sheet. Then the next attribute we need is the href attribute. Where is the CSS file located? Well, it's right next to each other. We only need the file name. So we are linking the CSS style sheet. Now our CSS style sheet is linked to our HTML file. Now we need to link the JavaScript file to our HTML file. We can do that by adding a pair of script tags. We will set the source attribute to be the name of the JavaScript file, index.js. All right, everything should now be linked together. The last thing we'll need is the live server extension in VS Code. Go to extensions. We will search for live server. It should be this one. We are going to install this extension. So whenever we save any changes to our files, the web page should refresh automatically. So now let's test this. You can go to file, save, or use the shortcut. I'm just gonna save everything. I'm going to right click on our HTML file, then open with live server. And here's our web page, but it currently doesn't have anything. Uh, let me just minimize this. I will readjust this window. 
Throughout this course, I'll have VS Code alongside a web browser. With our HTML file, we can add elements, such as an H1 element. These are typically used as headers. I'm going to say, hello, then save, and that should update automatically. Or you can press the refresh button, but since we have Live Server installed, we shouldn't need to. Then paragraphs are typically used for a paragraph of text. In VS Code, to generate a random paragraph of text, you can type lorem, then hit tab. Now we should have a random paragraph. I believe it's Latin. At least it looks like it. To change the style of our web page, we can go to our style sheet. To change the style of the body of our document, we will select body. I'll change the font family to something else. Font family. How about Verdana? There, we now have a different font. To increase the font size, you can set the font size property to be either in pixels or EM. Personally, I'm a fan of using EM. 2EM means 200%, where 3EM is 300% but that's a little too big. Let's stick with 2EM. All right, and that is everything we need to get started. Oh, important note, you do want your script element at the bottom of the body of your document. Just in case there's an error with your JavaScript file, you do want all of the HTML elements to at least render first before running any JavaScript code. All right, so let's delete our H1 elements and our paragraph element. We no longer need them for now. Be sure to save everything. We'll work with some basic output. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. To output some text, you can type console.log, add a set of parentheses, then a semicolon at the end. Within the set of parentheses to output some text, you can either use double quotes, single quotes, or backticks. Personally, I'm a fan of using these backticks. This is known as a template literal. They're helpful with inserting variables, which we will discuss in the next lesson. Using either double quotes or single quotes or back ticks, we can output some text. Let's say the word hello. Be sure to save. I'm holding Control S on Windows. There's no apparent output. We have to go to DevTools. So right click on your web page, go to Inspect, then Console. And here's our basic output hello. For an additional line of output, we can console.log again. Let's print a different message I like pizza. Let's save, and here's my second line of text. I like pizza, and I'm just gonna move these windows a little bit. That's better. Throughout much of the series, we will be working with this window. Again, you have to right-click on your web page, go to Inspect, then go to Console. Now within our web page, to create an alert box, you can type window.alert. Add a set of parentheses, semicolon to the end. We'll use a template literal. We'll need a set of backticks. This is an alert. This should create a pop-up window. This is an alert. Let's create another. Let's copy what we have, paste it. I like pizza. Let's save. This is an alert, okay? I like pizza. Not sure why we need to tell a user that, but we can. Now we have comments. To create a comment, you type two forward slashes. Comments aren't used for output. They're used as notes for yourself or for other developers. This is a comment. So when I run this program, then if we were to go to our dev tools, we don't see this comment at all. They're not displayed as output. They're either used for notes for yourself or for other people. For a multi-line comment, you can type a forward slash asterisk Anything that comes after will be a comment. This is a comment. You can see that the text is green. That means it's a comment. Again, we should not be able to see these comments. They're hidden. I'm going to turn this JavaScript code into comments just for the next part, because these window alerts are kind of annoying, to be honest. All right, now what we're going to do is populate our web page with some text. Within our HTML file, I will create an H1 element. H1s are usually used for headers or titles. There will be no text content yet, but I will set an ID. I will give this H1 element a unique ID of my H1. Feel free to pick a different ID, something you'll remember. I will also create a paragraph element. 
I will set the ID to equal my P, meaning my paragraph. So remember, there is no text content currently. Using JavaScript, we will add some text content. First, we need to select these elements by their ID, my H1 and my P. Uh, let's do that here. We will type document, meaning the document of our web page, dot get element by ID. Do pay attention to the capitalization. What ID are we getting? Let's start with my H1. So copy the ID, paste it within the set of parentheses. Be sure you're including quotes as well. Follow this with dot text content. We will set this equal to how about the word hello? Let me zoom out a little. Again, this can be back ticks, single quotes, or double quotes. All right, let's type the word hello. Now, when I save and refresh the page, that H1 element should display the word hello. Now, this time, let's get our paragraph element with the ID of my P, my paragraph. Document.get element by ID. The ID that we're getting is my P. We'll change the text content equal to, uh, what can we say? I like pizza. There we go. Hello, I like pizza. All right, everybody, so that's the basics of JavaScript. When working with basic output, you can use console.log, which we will be using a lot. To create an alert, you can use window.alert. To change the text content of an HTML element, you first have to select that element, then change the text content, then set it equal to some text of your choosing. All right, everybody, so that is the very basics of JavaScript, and in the next topic, we will cover variables.